Agricultural Inputs, Section 3. Now we're going to look at agricultural inputs in urban agriculture. Um, plants and livestock grown in an urban environment still need the same things to thrive as those produced in large-scale farming. Nutrients, water, space to grow, freedom from competition of other species. Um, but the types of inputs used and the method of use can vary greatly between large-scale farms and urban agriculture. Much of that difference is due to the scale alone. This section will discuss how some of these inputs might be used in urban agriculture. Closed systems. This is becoming more and more of a buzzword in agriculture these days. Um, and urban agriculture can be, and in many cases it is, practiced in the same general way as large-scale agriculture using the same types of fertilizers and pesticides, and the difference being primarily one of scale. However, the smaller scale generally smaller scale of urban agriculture makes it possible to think of and use inputs and outputs in a fundamentally different way than large-scale agriculture. The goal of many urban farmers and gardeners is a mostly closed system, wherein the inputs come from the farm or garden itself, or at least in the local area, rather than being transported long distance. Plant residue and animal waste are composted on site and used as fertilizer and soil amendments. Companion plants are chosen that grow well together, reducing the need for pesticides. And water for irrigation may be captured from roof runoff. Fertilizers. When growing plants on a relatively small scale, it may be possible for an urban farmer or gardener to eliminate or greatly reduce the use of chemical fertilizers. Compost can be made from plant material left after harvest, as well as animal waste, such as manure from chickens, rabbits, or other urban livestock, and it makes excellent fertilizer. In addition to being fertilizer, compost helps maintain soil structure, and if applied directly on top of the soil and left there, it helps uh, prevent erosion. Here we can see a homemade compost tumbler and some compost. Now what you notice about this compost tumbler is uh, its mesh, not a totally enclosed thing. And <clears throat> as a result, it lets air through into the compost and being a tumbler, uh, when it's rotated by, notice here, a little bicycle pedal used as a handle, um, then this chain going around rotates the drum. Uh, it mixes the material together and aerates it, which is a key thing for producing quality compost. Um, another thing about having an open mesh composter like this is that uh, the smaller bits of compost will fall directly out and uh, can be used um, without having to open up the entire composter. On the right, you see some really nice uh, compost. Insecticides. Uh, again, the smaller scale of urban agriculture might help the urban farmer or garden, gardener reduce or eliminate the use of insecticides by one, removing some insects by hand. Um, things like tomato hornworm uh, you know, are fairly large caterpillars. Easy to see. You can walk around and just pick them right off the plants without applying anything. Um, use alternative less top toxic insecticides such as uh, soaps. Um, Using plants that naturally repel insects, such as marigolds or geraniums or uh, um, petunias. Um, it may be possible to cover crops with netting during their most vulnerable time and simply physically block the insects from getting to the plant. 
or the use of biocontrol and beneficial insects um, for insect control. Herbicides, again, depending on the growing method used, herbicides may not be required and alternative methods of weed control can be used. Uh, mechanical removal of weeds by hand pulling or hoeing. Uh, you can see in the uh, next slide, um, someone hoeing weeds. Uh, light tilling. Uh, using alternative herbicides such as white vinegar. Pure white vinegar sprayed on plants will um, kill most, uh, most plants that it's sprayed on, but not result in any uh, um, harmful residue or long-term change uh, to the soil. And because the damage it does is physical, as opposed to chemical, um, resistance is, is a lot less likely to happen when using something like that. Um, confining chickens in an area is a good way to remove weeds and in fact, most plants <laughs> before planting. The chickens also provide fertilizer. Chickens love the scratch in the soil. They'll eat small plants coming up and uh, make a pretty effective way to prepare an area for uh, planting. In fact, uh, many people build what they call chicken tractors, which is a ch essentially a chicken enclosure that doesn't have a bottom. And it can be moved from place to place allowing the chickens to scratch in the soil and deposit their manure and essentially ready an area for planting. Hoeing is a traditional method of weed control, uh, simply cuts the weeds off at the soil level and prevents them from taking over. Irrigation. If the area to be irrigated isn't large, then water from irrigation might be captured from roof runoff using rain barrels or even small ponds. Um, rain barrels or other closed containers are more efficient than ponds um, due to less loss through evaporation than open water storage. Um, closed containers also prevent mosquitoes from breeding in the water uh, that's being stored for irrigation. And then alternative irrigation methods can be more efficient than overhead sprays. Traditional irrigation methods in uh, large scale farming um, use uh, typically large uh, sprinklers that may stretch uh, for hundreds and hundreds of feet and are driven in a circle around a central pump area. And uh, much of that water evaporates before getting to the soil and being used. Um, Using something like a drip hose, laying on the surface of the soil or buried a couple of inches deep, uh, uses water more efficiently because more of the water gets into the soil, unless is lost due to evaporation. Drip irrigation is very efficient for container grown plants as well. And root feeder type devices inject the water at the root level and again are very efficient but with the use of water but require more labor. Uh, to move them from area to area to inject the water into the soil. Um, here we, on this slide, we see a drip irrigation system. And uh, drip irrigation actually being used um, in a vineyard. And if you look at the uh, drip irrigation system, you have uh, ball valves which uh, control the flow of water through the whole system. You have essentially a, uh, a main pipe, and then you have these branches that come off. And then at each plant location, a uh, little drip valve so that when the water is turned on, it's pumped out of the well or the water source through a filter, through a pump, then out to the field where it's going to be used, and then dripped by a dripper emitter onto the surface. On the right, you see this in practice in a vineyard, and we have 
an irrigation pipe, and then at each plant location, a smaller pipe comes down to the soil level, or in some cases, and that's the case actually here, um, there's a dripper emitter on the pipe and the water falls from there to the soil. It makes for much more efficient use of water. Well, that concludes uh, Unit 1, Agricultural Inputs.